Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 316 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. It's Christmas Eve. Wow, amazing. Merry it's, Christmas. Oh, it's Christmas? No, no, no. I'm just saying Merry Christmas. Oh, okay. It's Christmas Eve. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. Congratulations. How how jazzed up is the set? How good is this? Are you feeling the Christmas spirit, Keelan? <laughs> I am. What did you get me? Um, Free labor. <laughs> wow, what a gift. For the whole year. Do you know what I got you? <laughs> What's that? The 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 gift of of uh of love. Uh how good's that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> now uh Keelan Keelan's been traveling a lot for, for some of the other less important work he does that actually pays him. Haven't you been traveling a lot? I have been. Did you know you've been in the news? Uh, with your travel have i have you seen this <laughs> oh no i saw this just this morning and i was like <laughs> oh my god <laughs> this, is, this is how crazy is this keelan's been in the news last night headed for melbourne he was allegedly caught vaping in his seat prior to takeoff it's then when things escalated confronted by a cabin crew he became aggressive and argumentative then attempted to enter the toilet he then allegedly pulled his pants down exposing himself to passengers before urinating on empty seats federal police were called in escorting him off the flight taking him to the southport watch house Wow. That was me. You're taking your pants down in the aisle of a Jetstar <laughs> flight to piss on the seats while vaping on his way back to Melbourne. I can't believe they let you off the plane. <laughs> I guess that's your average Jetstar experience, isn't it? Yeah. Keelan, that was actually part of his job as the mascot for Jetstar Airlines. <laughs> that's so good. I immediately thought of you when that happened. They'd, obviously, they didn't name Keelan, but we all know who it was. I think Keelan found out that there were some poor people on the Jetstar Airlines flight with him. He went, this is disgusting. And then someone had to, uh, informed him that, uh, actually, so you are poor. And he said, really? And then he blew some vanilla vape smoke into their face. And, oh, would a poor person do this? Dropped his pants and pissed all over the seats. That's incredible. How do you feel after all that? Yeah, good. I just can never fly anywhere in the world again. <laughs> So, oh man, I, I know that it's uh, Christmas Eve as of the time you guys are hearing this or early if uh, you're a Patreon supporter. Thank you very much. There's an annual subscription. There's a cheaper annual price. If you jump on, you'll not only will you be able to get early access to the podcast and Patreon exclusive episodes, you'll also help me pay my mortgage because the bank wants to take my home on Christmas. How could they? Um, <laughs> thank you to everyone who's been signing up. What a, what a, what a bunch of Christmas uh, cheer and spirit that that is. I uh, seriously really do appreciate it. Lots of people have been jumping on and they still are all the time. Patreon.com slash Lou Spears. Jump on, do the annual version. You get a poster and a free t-shirt. We're going to start fulfilling those uh, in January. So as grab a, them. As a Christmas gift to me, can I plug my podcast? Um, yeah. Yeah. In 10 minutes. Uh, so set a timer. <laughs> And, uh, and I'll allow it. Uh, so at about 13 minutes 49, that's when Keelan will start talking about... Uh, well, we won't talk about it now. Set a timer for 10 minutes. <laughs> I haven't done my Christmas shopping yet. <laughs> I haven't done my Christmas shopping. And oh, the, you know what that means? We're recording this on... Uh, what day is it? Thursday. I'm going to have to go on fucking Friday tomorrow. Which is... What day is that? That's, that's the, the 22nd. I'm going to go Christmas shopping at a fucking shopping center with all the other idiot husbands and boyfriends who left at <laughs> last minute. And you know what? Have you gotten your girlfriend something? I have. I have no fucking idea what I'm going to get. I don't know. Yeah. I have if no you, idea. If you walk I in. also have no money. <laughs> I have no budget. That's great. We're, we're on the same page with this. Okay. I walked into Robinson's. Yeah. The bookshop. bookshop in Frankston and they have a big book talk section where all the books from book talk are. That's good. I walked up, I asked the lady who works there, I said, what's a good book for my girlfriend? She likes this, this and this. I picked up a book from there and that's her present. Great idea. That's really good. That is a Maybe good I'll idea. Do that. Yeah. I also thought another good girlfriend present, they do this in Robinson's <laughs> as well, Frankston, Robinson's Bookshop Frankston. Bit of a plug there, we're sponsored. We're not, I wish <laughs> I was. I shop there all the time. They have a little section of mystery books yes right and and it, and it just vaguely describes the book so say it's uh say it was lord of the rings they might go adventure um peril long journey save the world and you'll go oh man i wonder what that that is you buy it you unwrap it and it's lord of the rings and you read it. it's like a blind date with a book 
I reckon that is such a good girlfriend present because if they don't like the book, it's not your fault. It's the Damn. fault of the person who wrote the description. Mm. So as long as you're like, oh, this description vaguely fits my girlfriend's interests, they open it up, it's a fucking horrible book. Or, or better yet, a book they haven't even read. You go, oh, well, the bloody book stuff, it's their fault. You're still a good boyfriend. That's a banger. That is a good idea. That's really good. So I think I might I might just get a, like two packets of sugar from a cafe. <laughs> you know those free ones you get? I'll get a two packets of sugar. I uh, probably don't need to wrap them up. They're technically already wrapped in the... And I'll just put those <laughs> under the under the tree and and go Merry Christmas. Mm. You know, and then, and, then, and then, you know, if she wants to buy herself a coffee, she could use them <laughs> on the drink. And I think that's what I'll get her for Christmas. It's going to be a big Christmas here at the Spears household. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say Merry Christmas... We haven't been evicted yet. <laughs> that's that's a good one. A threat. You say, oh, oh, you wanted a present. Well, if I get you a present, we're gonna lose everything. Have one of those Christmases. <laughs> we could. That's very Frankston. <laughs> you can't deny that. That's not it. That's that's not a Frankston Christmas. You know, I I could go to the Frankston shopping center and do all my shopping there, but that'll be that'll be hell. There, that'll be fights. If if you if there's one place you're gonna see a punch on, this like late Christmas shopping period, it's gonna be like the the JD Sport at Frankston Shopping Center. Yeah, for Frankston's sure. Actually, getting worse. It's getting really busy because it's it's developing and there's a lot more housing, but the the shops and the uh, aren't keeping up with it. Mm. But also all of the people that have given Frankston the deservedly scary reputation, they're all still here. There's just also like 31 year old cashed out mums mm. that are moving in, like young families with money uh, uh, can't even afford like uh, the places they would normally move into. So they're coming into Frankston and, and it's just like a real cultural clash. Like I'm seeing a lot of um, uh, social unrest, civil unrest in Ireland. They're really upset because uh, the, while well, some people in Ireland think there are too many migrants, too many refugees, uh, and there's a lot of violence that's happening between the two groups, uh, it's very much like that in Frankston, except we don't really have refugees. We kind of have the opposite of refugees, gentrifiers, right? <laughs> Frankston is populated by, you know, refugees of just general society, crackheads, poor people, young teen mums, meth heads, gangsters, criminals, me... And now all these other people with money are coming in and going, oh, we actually want to make this place nice because it has a beach. Okay, first of all, the beach has needles in it, okay? So watch your step. Secondly, all right, this is this is for real gangsters like me and Keelan. <laughs> That's who should be living here, not you. <laughs> so over the next 10 years, it's gonna all the poor people are just going to get booted out. We got a Uniqlo the other day. It's over, all right? The gentrifiers won. We got a Uniqlo. I went there. I bought a bag. Okay. Yeah, I'm praying that they open an H and M here. They will. Yeah, I, when they when they, they they're opening a, a YOMG, that's a frozen yogurt and burger place. They've opened a yeah. Betty's Burgers. That's an expensive thirty dollar burger joint. I have a, a tidbit. Yeah. Um, the other day I get a message from someone. Uh huh. A, not a, a guy I went to school with, but is also a fan. Yeah. Sent me this massive message asking me to ask you yeah. to head down to Betty's Burgers because they were doing a promotion and the promotion wasn't working very well. And I said, well, I'm definitely not asking Lewis because not my job. Yeah. And, but I said, uh, I'll think about it. I might come down myself. Well, now we've talked about it on the podcast. Now we've just given them free promo. No, there's some big like two for one promotion the day of and no one was showing up. That was right. more of what it was. Right. Anyway. I pick Phoebe up from work. Yeah. We go down. Yeah. I get this massive, massive bowl of frozen yogurt, fill it up. Yeah. I had a kind of an inkling that something good would happen. Yeah. And then I get to the cash register to pay. Guy yeah. knows me. Gives it to me for free. No charge. There we go. <laughs> See? That, and, and you know what that secured me? That's I don't have to pay for coffee for you for five mornings in a row now. <laughs> because that's what? About 25 bucks of... Of burger. So there we go. Five mornings off buying Keel and coffee. I did not buy you one this morning. So there we go. I said, oh, sorry, Keel. I've already been to the cafe. So you had to get you my pay own. for it yourself. Drink it in my backyard. You're not allowed in the house with those <laughs> shoes. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I, I didn't want to say to Phoebe that I think I'm going to get it for free because mm. I didn't want that disappointment. So she yeah. actually got a really small bowl of frozen yogurt because she was trying to be nice. Yeah. And I've got a massive one. And after yeah. she found out I was getting it for free and I turned to her and said, I knew it. 
Uh, she turned around, can I go fill mine up a little bit more, please? <laughs> she was like, oh, I would have got more if I knew this was what was happening. Yeah, that's, that is, see, that is the trap, isn't it? Of the, and that's such a fucking stupid thing about being a known person. It's like the more known you are, the more successful you are. So the less you need free shit, <laughs> Keelan and myself excluded temporarily for the moment. Uh, tough times, you know, there's ups, there's downs. We're in a down, all right. Well, look, I had a huge up health-wise and a big down financial-wise. Mm. So, you know, we'll, you know, we'll call this a, a real rocky medium. <laughs> mm. But, you know, that's, what, that's uh, what happens to me all the time now is I get free shit and I'm like, I would actually much prefer to pay for this, you know, because you look like such a fucking, such a piece of shit. Yeah. Or at least I feel like that when people go try to give me free stuff. When you know what it is, when you're in line and there's like a, there's like a family who obviously don't have heaps of cash, <laughs> and then and then they see you being perceived as some famous celebrity. Oh, you can have it for free, <laughs> but the single dad, divorced dad, you know, the widower, nah, mate, you gotta pay. Mm. That said, I I never say no, <laughs> yeah. and I'm always stoked. Um. All right, so I, I saw this, uh, this, this TikTok, right, um, that wasn't Keelan pissing all over the seats and vaping on a jet stuff flight and getting arrested, um, which, great job, man, really love it. The things he does for the show, really good. <laughs> I saw this TikTok on, online, and I don't know if you've seen this genre, but it's really popular. This is a, a real genre of TikTok. It's, the, it's, it's like halfway through an argument, one of the people starts filming just themselves discreetly having the argument. So it's like me and you are having a fight right now. I'm holding my phone just like this, yeah. but I'm filming me and I can hear, well, you can hear you, but you just see me yeah, yeah. and it's halfway through an argument. They always go viral. It's, uh, it's usually a woman being harassed by some creepy dude and she's like filming herself for her own safety, you know, like, yeah. no, thanks. I don't want to, please don't. I'm not going to give you my number, that type of stuff. But very rarely it's like a, an argument, like in a store, something like that. This one I saw and this guy's getting celebrated, right? So the guy filming himself is kind of calling out another male for being toxic and sexist, right? So he's gone, I'm such a feminist ally. The chicks are going to love this, right? Which is very suspect. Mm. Now I saw this and... I'm going to preface you a little bit, guys. The first 20 seconds of this, the other guy is going to sound really sexist, but just ride out with me because I agree with him 100%. <laughs> okay? Just have a listen. Women, I think it's a valid one. Get up earlier so you can accommodate yourself to put your fucking makeup on. I'm sure they do. Now, that sounds very sexist. Get up early in the morning and put your fucking makeup on. Okay, <laughs> now that sounds quite sexist. Thoughts, Keelan? Yeah, yeah, from, from that, it does. Yeah, yeah, okay, let's I'm continue. I'm sure they do. Do what? Get up early and get their makeup on. But like- But they the, don't if they're in the car driving, putting makeup on. Well, have you been seeing the same exact woman doing it every day for the past however long? So you know that that's the only time she puts her makeup on? Or are you just casually seeing one who's maybe a little behind that day I, and is in a hurry? And it's just a little, you know. There's no. That, that, if you've done it once, it's like cheating. You've done it m multiple times. It's the same thing. For sure, they've definitely done it more than once. So, so that's my, that's my point. My message is: get your fucking lazy ass out of bed and put your fucking. Makeup but you don't know on how. Home. You don't know what, like when so the last time. The she other did. guy is up, clearly very upset because he keeps seeing women driving putting their makeup on at the same time. Mm -hmm. And the feminist hero recording himself is going, well, I actually think it's fine that chicks put their makeup on while they're driving. That's actually totally cool uh, and that's fine. And this video has like millions of views and all of the comments are from women to this guy going, thank you so much for standing up for us. Am I crazy or is the other guy completely 100% right? He's upset at women putting their makeup on while they're driving their cars isn't that dangerous as fuck isn't yeah. that like using your phone while driving <laughs> and this other dude's like well you don't know if you know the women that are putting their makeup you don't know if they do that every day and it's like 
Well, if they did it once, it's wrong. <laughs> yeah. They shouldn't be doing their makeup while they're driving. That's dangerous as fuck. And all these women are like, thank you so much for standing up for us. I do this all the time. Well, you're a fucking idiot. If you're going to kill someone, put your fucking mascara on while you're driving a car. This guy's obviously having a little bit of road rage. And the other dude's like, I actually think it's fine for women to not use their hands on the wheel. Do you disagree? Yeah, I do. Really? <laughs> Man, I shave and... <laughs> <laughs> Okay. You're, a, you're a bad example. I'd Look, okay, and let's get this out of the way. All right, I don't drive. Okay, cool. All right, but if I had no arms, I'd still be right. <laughs> Two hands on the wheel. I had a fucking Uber driver the other day. He had one arm and I didn't like it. He was swerving. That's true. He had one arm. He got in the car and he had to fucking adjust his map. <laughs> and every time he did it, we're going 80 Ks, the car would go, <laughs> all right, I didn't like it. 40 minute drive, Uber driver with one arm, not a fan. It was an automatic car, thank God. <laughs> Imagine if that shit was fucking manual. All right, one second, I just gotta switch gears. <laughs> <laughs> you know I, you know that whole 40 minute drive, how, how, how much willpower it took me not to go, hey, two hands on the wheel. I'll change clothing while driving. That's obscene. <laughs> what do you mean you change clothing? Pants? Yeah, like... <laughs> <laughs> you can't change your pants while you're driving. Yeah, there is... I Like, if I'm driving to the gym and I'm, like, coming from, like, something like this, I'll just... There's a change, change room at the gym. But I don't want to walk in in my everyday clothes. I only want to walk in in gym clothes. Bro, you are so autistic. What do you mean? <laughs> you don't. You can't go into the gym in normal clothes. You have to be in gym clothes. But okay, so change in the in the car park. Uh, it's e but it's easy to do it while you're driving. Okay, so you so hang on, so you my... wear jeans all the time. So you're telling me you're getting out of jeans <laughs> and into shorts. While driving? Yeah. So you're taking the shoes off too? Yeah, of course. <laughs> but also like in the morning- So you're doing your laces when you're going, hang on a second? Yeah. Like when I was driving here, I was putting my shoes on. <laughs> you know, isn't it? <laughs> Look, okay, Am let's I... all pretend that I can drive. Isn't it really dangerous to drive uh, without shoes anyway? Nah. Kinda? No, nah, I wouldn't say so. Why, yeah. why would that be? Well, I think because uh, you need um, solid object, you can't like like you can't drive in heels as well. Oh, I guess so. Like if you if your toes miss, <laughs> yeah, I think that's the that's that's the action. You don't have uh, you don't have grip on your feet. Mm. The cars are the pedals are, are really scary and intimidating. To be honest, <laughs> when I look at them, my friend the other day was was driving and his shoes were um, had no like the. They're kind of worn out on the bottom, yeah. and his foot slipped, and he he, <laughs> he rear-ended a truck. <laughs> <laughs> see, yeah. you need something, yeah. yeah. See, you know, I I I may not know how to drive, but I know what's not safe to do while yeah. you do drive. You yeah, no, you're correct. It's not sexist to see a woman putting her makeup on while driving and think, "Stupid bitch." You are correct. But all these women are like, thank you so much for standing up. <laughs> standing up for what? Your right to d drive dangerously? <laughs> You're lucky you even are allowed to get them. Okay, that was sexist. But I just love, I just love that every, it's, you know what? I feel like everyone has seen, it's not obviously most videos that go viral of someone else calling out someone else's sexist or racist or fuck behavior. Most of those are exactly as described. But every now and then you see one of those videos where you're just 100% on the other person's side. You're like, nah, you know what? He's right. That She's not a Karen. She's a fucking freedom fighter. Let's go. But they're always, they're always good too because uh, so, sometimes it's like you can tell the, the person filming, like most of the time, right? It's uh, It's like some Karen being really racist to a black person because they're black. Mm. And that's disgusting, right? Calling the cops on someone for walking their dog in the park or something. And that's foul and she's a racist. But every now and then there is that one where you can just, you can just tell that the person filming really wants 
I want this to be a viral moment and I know I'm correct and they're just wrong. <laughs> a good example of that is the, you're not that guy, pal. You're not that guy. Because, you know, that was an interesting one where the big guy was probably in the wrong, but everyone thought he was really cool while he was doing it. <laughs> you know, you're not that guy, pal. You're not that guy. I still think about that. Mm. That's, you know, that guy was being quite aggressive, getting in the face of somebody else, but everyone was like, no, but he looks cool while he's doing it. I would like to, I, I don't think we've had the first racist video like that, you know? Like, like that, that'll be the, the level of charisma you would need to be horrifically racist on video and to have the comments be generally supportive. That's a charismatic man. There was a, an Austrian painter that did that a, a few decades ago. <laughs> but he was kind of the last one. Mm. You know, people are like, oh, he's really angry. It's like, yeah, but, you know, it really gets you going. <laughs> you know, he was a good or orator. Wouldn't say he was good at anything else. Knew how to run a train schedule, but that's about it. So how do you get out of your jeans? So you take the shoes off first? Yeah, cruise control is, <laughs> is like, is pretty good. And I only, I, you know, for, how, do you do, do you this every, how I do this often? really regularly. So every time you go to the gym? Yeah, not so every like time. a couple times a year. <laughs> That's a rude. little drive-by or keel is <laughs> unnecessary. Yeah. Um, no, I won't do it every every single time, but pretty regularly. Like, it's easy. It's what, when you're on cruise control going down a freeway, <laughs> you take your shoes off because you can kick your shoes off. Yeah, and then you just kind of because <laughs> the shoes I'm the least confused about. It's the jeans. You kind of just I don't know. Do this. Uh, it's, it's a very... Figure, you would have to plant your feet on, like, the floor of the car and then push up. I would be worried about, because you've got no shoes on, slipping and hitting the accelerator or the brakes. You just kind of do this. <laughs> <laughs> you're pulling your knees up to your chest and... And then you just... And so, you, so your down. ass comes out of the jeans first. <laughs> yes. Right? Okay. And then you just pull them down and then you kind of have to have one hand on the wheel after you like, one leg is, is out of the jeans. Yeah. And you just pull... Like that, it's easy. That's and then slipping into the shorts, like the gym shorts. That's easy. Yeah, that's easy. That's peanuts. And then and then <laughs> shoes back on. Shoes back on. Now that's now, easy. Here's here's the controversial part. Shirt off, temporary blindness. Shirt on, more temporary blindness. I yeah, I don't think I'd do shirt. That's good. That's heaps. Yeah, I'll sometimes like if it's. I would think, though, I'm, that I reckon shirt is less dangerous than pants. Because you can, you if you rolled up the shirt, and I'm not saying you should do this, but you roll up the shirt, so there's only a, a little fabric, right? You just go like that, now you can see. Mm. Right? One hand on the wheel, a hand in the right, and hand in the left. That, to me, is way less crazy than the pants. The jeans. And the shoes off and on and changing pants and then shoes back on? Mm -hmm. How long does that take you? A couple of minutes. It's, like, it's not all at once. That's it's an like, ordeal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, surely it's way easier and faster and more convenient to do it in the car park if you must. Or how about this? Put the clothes on before you step into the car. You know how I... You know how my brain works. Yeah. That's not happening. You're just never going to do that. Never. Right. Well, that's, that's, taking, if, if Killen ever dies in a car accident, we know how he went and it was half dressed. Taking like your jumper off in, in winter is kind of like, or like when you're driving with a jumper and you have to take it off because you get too hot. Like yeah. That's, that's, that's tricky in itself. Yeah. Well, not if you did it at a red light, which I'm assuming you don't do. <laughs> no, I, <I'm> thinking, <laughs> I drive on freeways a lot. Oh, man. Someone please buy Keelan a Tesla for the safety of everyone around him. So he can just hit that button. And if Vic Rose is listening, this is all satire. No, oh, it's, it's performance. You know, I, I don't know anything about driving. I don't have my license. Same, brother. I'm driving unregistered. You know, I was actually looking at cars, right? Um, because I, I'm going to start uh, after January in Perth. Uh, I'm going to come home and I'm going to start doing lessons straight away. And I was looking at cars because I'm going to go on to my green peas because I'm going to get my, I, I will maybe get my license when I'm 30 years old. Mm. I turned 30 January 16th, right? Uh, and I was looking at the exemptions because I wanted a car for touring. So I need like a bigger one. 
And uh, you, in Australia, if you don't know, we you go on your L's, your learner's permit, and then after that you get your P, your, your probationary license, and there's two stages to your P's. Uh, there's red P's, which is the first one, and then green P's, which is the second one. And both of those come with certain restrictions about the type of car you're allowed to drive. And it's basically engine size and horsepower. Like you can't have a really fast or a really powerful car is the gist of it. Um, but there's a bunch of exemptions. And I didn't know this, but if you have an ABN number, if you run a business, if you're self-employed, there's no restrictions for you at all. So like uh, an 18 year old could just get a, an ABN number and drive a Lamborghini if he wanted to. You could that that'd be cool. You get a green Lamborghini, you match it to your plates. That would be good. That's what that's what I'm gonna do, you know? That's actually probably not what I'm gonna do. Well maybe keep supporting me on Patreon. We might even tick over the, the amount that I owe. Let's get to zero, guys. Um <clears throat> right, what else is happening? Oh, I uh I did I I've been doing um <clears throat> every time I go home. My grandma and my parents, they live in the same street. So whenever I go home, we had like the Spears family Christmas. So my dad's side of the family, I, I did that. And that was, that was really good to see everyone and um, talk to some people I wanted to talk to for a while. Um, and then uh, after that, I went to my grandmother's house and I helped her paint the fence. She's been uh, asking me to paint the fence uh, for a while and I had some time. So I came over and I painted her fence. And when she came in, we we're talking around, she's like, oh, my neighbor just would not let me go this morning. She was talking to me and she talked my ear off. I said, oh, wow, uh, what about it? She said, oh, I just told her that you were coming over to help me with painting the fence. She kept asking all these questions about you. She wouldn't let me go. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. I didn't think anything of it. I go and I, I spent like a, <clears throat> a couple hours painting grandma's back fence and I cut some bushes and stuff, you know, good grandson activities. Did that, felt really good was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Good to help out your grandma or your grandpa. You should do it if you have older parents as well. Um, did that and then finished up. Took me like two hours. I'm exhausted. And then as I leave, her neighbor's waiting out the front for me. And she's like, uh, maybe Chinese, like 50 years old, barely speaks English. And she thinks I'm a gardener. She doesn't know that I'm a grandson. She goes, oh, you cut leaf. I'm like, yeah. And uh, I thought she was saying, oh, you just got finished doing the gardening for your grandmother. What a good grandson you are. What she was actually saying was, oh, could you come over to my house and cut the leaves at my house for me right now? Uh, and uh, so she goes, oh, you cut leaf. And I went, yeah. And she goes, come here. I'm like, all right. And I just followed her <laughs> into her house, into her backyard. My grandma's like, what the fuck is he doing? And then she goes, and then I, I'm, I don't know what I'm thinking. I'm just thinking this might be a good story. Then she goes, uh, all down here and all down there and all down here. Uh, my husband, uh, no time. So you, I'm like, uh, all right, I'm her husband. <laughs> so I, I just, I just go, all right, one second. And I go back and I, I get the tools uh, <laughs> what? from my grandma's house. And I just start, I just did a whole. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> I did a whole fucking fence. There was, there was all fully overgrown. And she, you know, she's a little Chinese lady. She was about maybe four foot 11. Her husband's probably five one, right? Wow. So really tall. And, uh, <laughs> and she's like, and you cut up there cause damaged the roof and you cut over here. And she just like bossed me around and I did it. I was in a good mood. <laughs> Did the whole whole thing for for her and uh, and she's like and you come back next week and dig up all of this and replace with the the gravel and I went oh I'm not a gardener she went what <laughs> <laughs> I'm like no I'm not I I don't this isn't my job she goes what do you mean you do uh, a <laughs> you do uh, all the all the fence I went yeah yeah like uh, as uh, as a favor she went favorite I'm like as a uh, as a gift and she went you want Christmas I'm like no. Uh, she's my grandma. She went, oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm very sorry. I, I think you, I, I think you gardener. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm grandson. She went, oh, you want money? You want money? I went, no, I don't want money. She go, oh, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Oh, that's so sweet. Uh, and then, and then I left. Oh, it was really good. <laughs> 
It was really easy. It took me. It took me like thirty minutes. I went, I wasn't gonna do it if it was a big job, but I had the tools. I was all. I was all sweaty and shit. And he was covered in paint. I'm like, I might as well just do it. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, because because uh, the woman said, uh, I think my grandma has an actual gardener, and she was like, oh my, uh, uh, my neighbor have a gardener. Because she thinks I'm a gardener. My neighbor have other gardener, and uh, she say to email. But I, I don't, I can't write English. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, I'll just do it. That's nice. Yeah. So that was my, that was my good deed of the weekend. It was, uh, it was very good. And, and because I was so nice to this woman, that actually gives me license to do the accent for that story. Mm -hmm. And it's not racist. I think that's how it works anyway. <laughs> and if you do think that I, that the accent was racist is actually not, I was fucking nailing it. That's exactly <laughs> That's exactly how she sounded. Can I plug my podcast? Uh, did your timer go off? Yeah. Yeah, all right. You're a bit late though, so we might as well not even bother. It's the Keelan and Tyler Blu-ray review podcast, oh exclusively God. on Spotify and YouTube. Yeah. Uh, look it up. It's, oh, so it's on YouTube now? Yeah. It was only Spotify? No, no. Ex uh, audio, exclusively Spotify. Okay. But then also YouTube. Yeah. Uh, next week, this, this coming week, we plan on calling you actually if you're going to be around oh okay so you haven't recorded it yet not yet no you haven't so so each episode gets you recording one episode one a week yes yes that's right that's weird because i swear in my memory somewhere there's a vague memory of you and keelan calling me me and keelan yeah that sorry you and tyler <laughs> calling me and yeah there was some noise about a podcast or something you know, we might have just called you when we're planning the idea. Probably. That's probably it's what probably it was. Because you wouldn't just pre-record, like, no. how many episodes are there total? There will be 10. There will be 10. So yeah. that at the moment, how many are there? I think episode 7 just went up. Yeah, right. So wait, you, so you wait, wouldn't wait, just wait. sit down and record 10 in a row. Yeah, episode 7 went up yeah. on Tuesday, yeah. Right, okay. But episode 8, we're going to call you Monday. Oh, okay. We're going to call you on Boxing Day morning. Well, gee, that's rude. <laughs> Yeah. Because Boxing day morning. That, that's that's my day off. I might not even answer. Yeah, but if you could answer, that'd be great. <laughs> okay, well, look, if if I and are you going to ask me about how my Christmas was and Boxing Day and everything? Mm -hmm. Cool. How about this? When you call me, I'm going to say Scooby Doo, and that's <laughs> and if I say Scooby Doo in that phone call, that's how you'll know that it's actually happened live. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Keelan and Tyler review Blu-ray podcasts. Hopefully I don't forget. I could forget. If I do forget, that would be very me as well. It's one of the biggest film and TV podcasts in Australia. You know what's really funny? It that charts. is actually true. Yeah. How many film and TV podcasts in Australia are there? You, did you just pick the, the most niche category you could find on Spotify? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and there's not many. A lot of them are like the block watch along podcast. Keelan wants to know what it's like to chart. How does it feel? <laughs> Good. Yeah. The numbers are so low and I'm charting. It's hilarious. That's good. You know, uh, speaking of Spotify, we, uh, uh, this show, Spearhead Sundays, right? A real podcast. Mm. Um, we, uh, uh, have been doing really well. We started uploading video on podcast. We, uh, we were talking to a, a contact at Spotify and we were, we were like, they were giving us tips and we were doing everything that they were saying and they were helping us out. <clears throat> and, um, uh, we, we did everything we were doing and then we were going to go, all right, can you um, help us do this? And we finally got everything sorted. And we're like, oh, can you help us do this? And uh, and uh, they, they don't have their job anymore. They got laid off along with everyone else at Spotify. Spotify got giant, massive layoffs. And now we're just stranded and without know, a contact. You know what the, <clears throat> the funny thing is? Uh -huh. I got a notification on LinkedIn yesterday. Yeah. It's her birthday. Oh, well, <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> I assume you're not listening to the show anymore, <laughs> uh, but if you are, we must be doing a good job because because this is purely a leisure activity. <laughs> so happy birthday, Merry Christmas, and I hope you find a new job soon. I feel awful for them. It is Fight. it is really horrific because I because you know what's 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 not funny, but that morning that I sent the email, I read the news story about it was like what is it third round of layoffs or something 17 at Spotify 17 percent of the workforce and that's after they've already done that twice yeah. uh and I was like oh man that's that's fucking horrible oh but that reminds me I need to email my Spotify lady because I have a question about the podcast I email her I get an automatic response this person no longer works here I was like damn 
She didn't survive round three? Probably because she was helping us. <laughs> you know, it's not a good sign. Laid off just before Christmas and before her birthday. Happy <laughs> birthday. That's rough. That's a rough one. Um, so Christmas. Christmas. We wanted to talk about Santa. Uh, now, I think I'm going to um, do a little Spotify question, but if you're watching on YouTube, I, I would love to know your stories. How did you find out that Santa was not real? Because Keelan reckons he's got a good story, and I feel like everyone has a good story about this. I don't, and I was thinking about why. I don't really rem I don't think I remember like finding out that he wasn't real. And if anyone's like four or five, he is real. <laughs> um, to, to all of our toddler listeners, I said he's real. Um, but I don't think I have a memory of finding out Santa. I was, you know, there's a few memories that you have as a kid that are like, oh my god, my world's changed. I feel like that's like Santa realizing your parents are like humans. They're not like mom and dad. They're just like people who ha who are also your parents. They're not like these figures. They become actual people who used to be children. That's like a big thing of like, oh fuck, dad doesn't know everything. He's just a, a bloke, right? <laughs> I love him, but he is just a bloke. Um, just like I'm just a bloke. How weird, that blows your mind. Same thing, teachers, you find out the teachers are people. Mm -hmm. You see the t a teacher at the shops, you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> Mr. Richards goes to IGA? I thought he was just in the school and was a teacher. <laughs> He's wearing a T-shirt and shorts. What the fuck? Um, and, uh, and, and finding out what porn is mm. and sex. That's another one. I've, I've got my – I remember my, um, my sex – thing because we talked about the first time i watched porn last episode i've told that story but because i was thinking about my world changing moments as a kid and i remember we were behind the sheds at school and one kid was like do you guys know what sex is we we're in primary school i was like no and he goes this is how babies are made penis and vagina and they do this and i was like what the f Fuck, and there were like 10 of us, all boys going, no way, nah, bull, gross, <laughs> right? But I don't have that memory of Santa not being real. And I think it's because I'm an older brother because at the time I was uh, become becoming too old to believe in Santa, my brother was in his prime Santa years. So instead of like, finding out that it's not real i was instead brought into the conspiracy mm. and i was and i was made to assist because i do remember we would leave out beer and cookies and uh for santa and a glass of milk for his for his reindeer uh dad just wanted an excuse to have a vb on like a sunday night before christmas you know um so we did all of that but i don't ever remember stopping believing i just remember helping mum and dad keep it going for a while but you reckon you've got a funny story of yeah. how you found out yes so if you remember the early 2000s all the big shops like kmart target bw were doing a big campaign of like don't touch your gifts don't look at your gifts the elves are watching yes do you remember that yeah big campaign and i just never liked it it always felt wrong to me yeah. <laughs> as a five-year-old i was like well this yeah. isn't right and so I started asking lots of questions like, well, what if I set up a camera to take a photo of Santa? Yeah. All these things. Mm -hmm. And I was becoming paranoid about Santa. Yeah. So I conveniently had like lost a tooth. I was about probably five or six. Oh, so you're still in tooth fairy age as well. Yeah. And the tooth fairy didn't make sense to me because yeah. my mum stopped putting, it stopped letting us put teeth under our pillow. We had to put it in a glass next to our bed. My mum did that too. <laughs> yeah. Lazy bitch. Yeah. Don't wake me up. Why, you're not sneaky? <laughs> so, anyway, I've one day... Probably because after, after what, the first tooth, you woke up and she was like, fuck, I have to try again. I've put, I've put my tooth in a glass before school yeah. and I've kind of walked out to my mum and stepped down and gone, my tooth is in the glass. I'm going to get ready for school now. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. I hid under the bed. <laughs> oh, nice. And then two minutes later, my stepdad walks in and just drops a $2 coin in the glass. Come on, dad. Don't drop it. <laughs> yeah. Dropping it from a height so it goes big. <laughs> oh, look, there's a bloody coin in there, mate. And then from there, I just knew that it was all fake. It was it's all, all made bullshit. Up. 
Oh, so everything, the whole conspiracy, the whole Santa, everything. the tooth fairy, the, everything. The Easter bunny. Yeah, the Easter bunny. It's all bullshit. It's a scam to keep us hopeful, to keep us under the thumb of control. Keelan was the original QAnon kid. <laughs> and I reckon I went to school. I remember saying to someone in like the computer lab, yeah, Santa's not real. And this is how I know. <laughs> I've got proof. <laughs> Yeah, you're one of those kids. I think my girl, uh, she was the kid that uh, blew it with sex ed, right? Because I think her older brother had sex ed, right? But she was much younger and obviously her parents made the correct decision of like, well, if the older brother knows all this stuff, he's going to tell the kids. So we should tell all the kids all at once. Jazz goes immediately at like six years old to the Christian school <laughs> and tells all the kids how babies are made and what sex is and condoms and this. And uh, you, you actually don't need to be married. Casual sex is something that, that exists. And uh, apparently they, their family were just getting irate calls from parents for weeks afterwards because it spread throughout the entire school. And all these kids uh, who were who were never who never would have been allowed to attend a sex education meeting at by the school were being taught by Jazz. <laughs> it was That's like funny. six, which is really good. So uh, you know what? That's actually a great. How about let's broaden it away from because you might not be listening to this on Christmas. What are some like mind blowing moments for you as a kid? Like I feel like everyone's is like when you find out what sex is when you find out what porn is when you uh watch like a, a when you find out swear words that was a huge one i remember that uh when you find out that you can just say them and you're like oh my god nothing happens when you find out teachers are people your parents are people um yeah man there's got to be a bunch of other like childhood defining mind-blowing moments write them in the comments and we'll put a little thing on spotify as well i'd love to hear yours we'll read them on the next episode of the show there's got to be heaps that i'm not even thinking of um do you have any any others that you can think of from that think just made your like five-year-old brain go what the fuck not that i can think of i know high school the first time i wagged and yeah. There were no consequences. Yeah, that's that was a huge nuts. one. When nothing happened. And also, I feel like when I first did it, you you kind of think that, like, just the general public is going to see you out of school and go, Oi, yeah. why aren't you at school? But they just don't ever. And you're like, oh, you can just, like, leave school. And, and even if you do get caught, nothing really happens. In my year 11 and 12, I would wag fucking all the time just periods and classes i didn't want to go to i'd be like oh i i actually don't have to do anything i can do whatever i want basically yeah when i have a good story about this when i was doing my exchange i went to a high school in america for a whole year and in the last like two months of being there i had the shit engineering class yeah that i'd already taken a version in australia so i was just repeating the same content yeah and so i told the teacher i was like Hey, I go back to Australia in a few weeks. I'm just going to stop coming to your class. Yeah. I told him it was like two weeks away. This is months, yeah. months before I left. And so for months, he wasn't reporting me as absent. He was reporting me as, as present because he knew that uh, I'd already told him. Yeah. But he thought it was only a couple of days that I wasn't going to be there. Yeah, right. But he just kept doing it. The new school year starts. Yeah. And then we ran into each other <laughs> in the library. <laughs> and he was like, I thought you'd gone back to Australia. I was like... I did. I, I will be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so good. Yeah. Um. Oh, man, I just thought of something and now it's gone. Awesome. That's, that's, oh, here's another one. This, this is actually, I don't know if I've ever told this story. This is actually just a, probably, I actually regret doing this, but I was in primary school. I found out like just that you can just lie mm. and you can just say things that aren't true. Like I remember we, we used to have this, we had this art teacher who was, a, who was a horrible bitch and she was a horrible mean person to all of the kids. Everyone didn't like her. And it wasn't like we were being naughty and we got yelled at. She was actually mean, um, but never in a way that was like child abuse or nothing like huge. It was just like really mean all the time, uh, but nothing that you could really complain about especially because you're like you know you're in year six how old are you like 11 12 yeah right so uh we as as a group as a class decided to make up a bunch of things 
that this woman did to us and complain to the principal as a group to get her in trouble, to scare her into being nice to us. And what we did was, this is really fucked, but I remember we, uh, our friend group was into painting Warhammer figures, little plastic miniatures. I, t I said that she came over and stomped on them <laughs> on purpose. I said she came over to us at lunchtime. We were having a bunch of fun and just playing with our little little men. And she came over and said these are stupid and then stomped on them and then walked away. And I and about I think it was six other boys went and complained to the principal about that and we we organized it we said we're going to tell her that she stepped on the miniatures we're going to tell them that uh that she screamed at a kid we're going to say that this other kid she grabbed him by the collar and shook him around none of it was true right she was a horrible mean person but she was not this bad we just wanted to scare the fuck out of her and uh it got escalated real quick because we went as a group of six boys and we all complained and we all backed each other up and we all got separated and pulled out of class. I remember what happened to me. I got pulled out of class and uh, it was the vice principal and he took me on a walk around the school. And I feel like it was like one of those moments where I was like, I know what I'm doing is really, really wrong, but I've come this far and I can't stop. And uh, he was like, so what happened? I told him the st all the stories again. And uh, and then <laughs> she and then she took two weeks off, <laughs> and she came back, and she was really nice. <laughs> so it worked. That's crazy. Isn't that fucked? I feel so bad. I mean, we were eleven and twelve. We didn't really know what we were doing. It was like this. It was like this thing of like it was, you know, it was honestly it was probably my idea because I was such a ringleader in primary school. I was a bit of a gang leader, and then in high school, I kind of I because I wasn't drinking and doing drugs. I was a bit of a loner. Mm. But in primary school, I was a year older than most of the kids and I was really big. So I was like the leader and we would do, we would run around doing a bunch of different shit, uh, throwing sticks at cars and all this stuff was just my idea. And this one was my idea. And uh, we all just, we all just submitted this, this series of false complaints about one teacher. We all told the same sticks for six stories. They verified it. None of it was true. And I guess she got put on leave for a little bit. They took it really seriously, as they should, because it sounded true. Like, we, we weren't like, oh, then she chopped one of the kids' heads off. We told these stories that were, like, bad enough to not be child abuse, but but bad, but were bad enough to be, like, something a teacher should not ever do. And, yeah, she went on leave for two weeks. And you know what? It fixed her right up. She was real nice. And she was really nice for, for, the, for the next two years. So some might say, myself included, that was a horrible thing to do. To, to someone else, but other people might say it actually benefited the world uh, as a whole. So it was like a, it was a it was a, the wrong thing to do, but it had a great outcome on the well being of of every kid in our art class. So I do regret doing it, but but I do acknowledge the the massive benefits that all the kids received, and you're welcome. <laughs> That's fucked up. That one isn't that fucked. Yeah. Imagine being her, because because. You know, you're you're a kid and you don't know what actually would happen. But as an adult, you know exactly what happened. They would have pulled her in like her boss. Because for me, I'm a kid. That's the principal. That's her boss. Mm. That's the guy that employs it. It would have been the boss. It would have been HR. It would have been maybe someone from the government. And they would have gone, uh, okay, so you have uh, accusations of abuse <laughs> from six students. And she would have gone, I didn't do any of this. And she would have been right. They would have been like, well, little Timmy and Lewis and James and Marty and Sam and and Tim all said that you stomped on their Warhammer miniatures on purpose, called them silly, and then walked away. I didn't do any of that shit. They're lying. Oh, really? Six 11-year-old boys are all lying? They all told the same story. What about when you grabbed Timmy by the collar and shook him? I didn't do that, didn't you? Two weeks leave. You do it again, you're fired. <laughs> but she was really nice after that. That's crazy. What was her name? I can't even... 
I can't even remember. She was like, uh, she she was uh, she was like forty something. She had short hair. Maybe she had glasses. I can't even remember what she looked. All I know is she was like a she was I she was such a mean person. Yeah. She was really really. You know, some teachers they're not they're not even bad teachers. They don't even do anything like particularly wrong. They just they're just very mean spirited. And if they get you alone, they'll say something mean to you. She was that. So you know what? She deserved it, and I was 100% right, and I'd do it again. I wouldn't, actually. I feel I feel awful about that. It's like, yeah, it's just one of those things where, like, you're just a kid and you have no idea the repercussions of of lies that you can tell. That's oh. awful. I've never done anything like that since. But, you know, maybe that was a little bit of practice for getting all those fake stories on the news, you know? I was like, oh, you can just lie about an adult and they'll believe it. Cool. <laughs> bit of practice. Um, Good stuff. One One more high school story. Um, I did a VCE year 11 at, at TAFE in Frankston with my friend Rafi. Yeah. And Rafi never got along with any of the teachers, but I happened to get along with every single one, like yeah. on a friendly, very friendly basis. And at the very end of the year, we're doing this final project. I've done it. He's asked to look at mine. And I said, sure, but just change the words yeah. so that it's not the same answer. Yep. I get a call from one of our teachers, Michelle, and she goes, Hey, just had a look at your final assignment. Um, you didn't, you didn't copy Rafi by chance, did you? And then, that's so good and because then, if you don't know, Rafi looks Asian. <laughs> so that's a little bit of uh, racism from the teacher there. Gone, the white kid must have copied the Asian kid. Actually, we both then started laughing, and she goes, "I know you didn't copy Rafi, but you shouldn't have let him look at it. I, oh. I could have failed you for this. Anyway, have a good summer." <laughs> That's good. And then I think Rafi failed year 11. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I failed high school so badly that they didn't even tell me what my ATAR result was, <laughs> which I think you have to get in Australia or in Victoria, rather. I don't know. It's Australia, ATAR. Uh, it's like percentages. So, like, a, 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 I think, a, isn't it like a, 90, a 99.5 is the best you can get? That's yeah. like you're better than 99.5 so you're in that other 0.5 the top 0.5 students that's what that means i didn't even get my score displayed in a letter which i think means that if you get in the bottom 30 percent mm. so the dumbest 30 percent of the country they don't even tell you your result to spare your feelings and i remember that i i i looked at my exam and i just didn't know anything and i wrote i answered the questions that i that i could answer and then everything else I just didn't. And I finished my ATAR exam in about 20 minutes. And then I sat there for 40 minutes, like uh, with my head in my hands. No, just like my, my head, just like this, <laughs> on my elbows, just like sleepy. I wasn't freaking out. I was like, oh my God, I'm stupid. I just didn't pay attention for all of year 12 because I started posting online and I was like, oh, I want to be a comedian. I know what I want to do. None of this shit is relevant or important to me. Um, and I remember my, my teacher after like 20 minutes for real, I put my pen down and put my head on the desk for a snooze. She came up and she was one of the teachers I really liked. She was like, are you, are you finished? And I was like, yeah, I think so. You know, really jovial. She was like, are you sure you don't want to try? She was really like, oh my God, I'm watching this kid throw his future away because <laughs> he doesn't want to try. And, uh, and I was just like, nah, all good. I'll be all right. <laughs> Sweet. What a good, nice teacher. Yeah, bottom 30%. And I only found that out because when I got the letter, I didn't even look at it. I was like, I was, it was such a fucking moment of um, such a like, oh, I'm in a movie. I was like, I'm not even going to look at this result because I know that's how unimportant it is to me. And I put it straight in the bin, didn't even open it. I only found out what I got because Jazz got it out of the bin and opened it. Didn't tell me for years what I got. I was like, don't tell me. I don't want to know. I was, I was like, I don't want to know what I got until I know for sure that it didn't matter. And, uh, and it didn't matter. I think. Maybe I'll be in a better position. <laughs> Probably nah, not. Nah. Um, all right. We're going to end it there, guys. I, I sincerely hope you have a very, very Merry Christmas. Uh, we're probably not going to take a break. Uh, I don't want to. Um, people have been asking me, is the podcast going on break? I have not been doing this for two years, basically. I've had so many breaks with the surgery and everything. I don't want to take a break. I want to keep on going through. Um, uh, 2024 in January, 
I'm in Perth. I got 12 shows in Perth. Grab your tickets. If you want a Friday or a Saturday night show, buy them now. The first show is the uh, is the 19th of January, I believe, and the last show is the 28th. So they're coming up in less than a month. Wow. That's so soon. Buy tickets. Uh, Perth Fringe Festival. It's going to be fun. I've got 12 shows. I can't wait. It's going to be the perfect opportunity for me to get back into stand-up in a city I love performing. And then I'm going to Melbourne. Then I've got uh, Sydney's on sale now, and so is Adelaide. And I have a bunch more dates that will be announced soon. Loosebeers.com for tickets. And uh, jump over to Patreon. Uh, there will be a Patreon episode up there right now for you. And I'll talk to you next Sunday. I hope you have a very Merry Christmas uh, and a New Year's. Is a New Year's happening? In between? I think in a week. In a week. Okay. All right. Well, I'll talk to you before 2024. Get thinking about those goals. Hang on. 20. Nah, there'll be a new year. Yeah, sorry. Oh, wow. My maths is wrong. Hey. 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 I'll see you next year. Huh? Pretty good? Ah, just ruined a good episode. Bye. Have a shit one.